Thank you for tuning in to Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Uh, what I have today is a, another Type 4 uh, Class D board. This one uh, has a marking on it of WAR 2000.1 DA. So I'm not quite sure what the make of this board is, but it's your standard Type 4 board. This is my cheat sheet for these amps because I try not to memorize things because that leads to assumptions. So I had drive at uh, pin 10, but I did not have drive at the front of R56 over here by the uh, optocoupler. The VIA, when I removed the card, the VIA looked good. I didn't see anything wrong with the VIA. Uh, so I knew right then if I had drive at the pin, but I didn't have drive at the resistor over here at R56 uh, going to the uh, optocoupler that I knew that there was a broken trace or a broken VIA. There was something broken somewhere. So at first I thought it was a broken VIA here, um, but it had continuity from the pad on the board to the VIA. So I knew that the VIA was good between the resistor, the VIA, through-hole VIA, to the pad. So I knew that the brake had to be at the VIA going to the pin. Uh, this board is all wired up right now, otherwise I'd flip it over and show you the jumper. Uh, that I used. I just took a jumper off pin 10 on the bottom side of the board direct from the pin over to this via which completed the circuit going back to R56 so that broke so that uh, brought my low side drive back for me. Um, I did replace the uh, the two T's and two X's on this driver board. I did have two shorted two X's uh, on the low side which makes sense when the low side drive got lost. So I replaced uh, both sides of the of the uh, 2X and 2Ts and I just threw in some 640s to test the drive because this board didn't come with 640s in it. And just to let you guys know you um, if you're new to this, this, these are the IRF 640 ends, these end channel FETs that these amps use. Um, so, and since it had a broken VIA, I did install a header. I do recommend that uh, on these kind of boards, if you have problems with the pins and VIAs, that you use a header. It's, it only raises the, the, uh, raises the card about a quarter inch off the board. You can glue it in place. You can do whatever, but at least you know that the contact points between the pins and the board are solid again um, so when I send this back out if they choose to remove the header they can uh, but just keep in mind that it does have a broken via and where, where you have one you may have more so this is a solid connection um, I won't glue it in place in case the owner decides to remove the header um, but I do recommend leaving the header in so uh, that's where this amplifier is. Um, it does work. It's functional. I have a 50 hertz signal uh, going into the board right now coming from my Heathkit IG1272. I love that thing by the way. Uh, for all you uh, guys out there that are Heathkit owners. So I have my 50 hertz signal going in and as you can see on the scope I do have my 50 hertz signal. And it's clean too, so um, I don't suspect anything wrong with the inductor or any of the uh, output filtering. So other, all around this board, uh, like I said, had a broken pin 10 via. Uh, the power supply is good, all the control voltages are good. The 640s are not heating up whatsoever. Uh, replace the uh, drivers, the two T's and two X's and put a header in so that fixed this type 4 board right up and um, it's ready to go back out 
Thank you for watching and stay tuned. I've got a couple more of these coming your way. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Give me that thumbs up. Leave me some comments down below and I will uh, get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching. Take care.